I'd like to show you how to take care of a small problem if you find something that you've recorded that isn't just quite right. You meant to play something differently than you played it. There's a very easy way in GarageBand to do what's called punch in, where you can designate an area where GarageBand will automatically begin recording and stop recording so that you can play along and sort of replace a small section of audio. So I need to figure out in my bass part where that place is because I knew during that take that there was a problem somewhere around the pre-chorus. So I'm going to go ahead and just listen to it. I'm going to double click in the ruler so that it starts playing right here. If I put the playhead here and push the space bar to play, cycle record happens to be on, so it would send my playhead back to the beginning. Okay, so I heard it there. There's a place where the guitar changes chords and the bass sort of lags behind. Now, it might be a little hard to hear, so one nice thing is to be able to sort of isolate an instrument and do what's called soloing it up. I'm going to click on the headphone icon, which will solo the bass and play the middle part of that pre-chorus again. Hear how it did that little slide in the middle there, that little boo-doo? That was sort of late. The guitar chord changes, and I was reacting, hearing, oh, there's a chord change there, and fine, it could probably live, but I'd really rather replace that pre-chorus and really try to nail it, since there'll be an instrumental section of the song. I can't even count on it being masked by the vocal or anything. So what you want to do is actually designate the area that you want to punch in by setting the cycle region. And we can just click and drag the ends of this down and make it the right size. I'll go back and grab the beginning of it here. So you might think, okay, I'll have it punch in right exactly at the pre-chorus. Well, the problem with that is you might actually miss a tiny bit of that first note, or you might miss a little bit of the tail end of the last note. I can't have GarageBand cut out too early, so what I like to do is pull it back a bar and add a bar so that I've actually got a little bit of breathing room. So then you probably want to press play and see exactly what the cycle region sounds like now that you've identified it. You can sort of get used to exactly how long you have when you come in. I'm also going to zoom in so I can see the area a little bit better. And I'll press play. <laughs> Okay, so I have one, two, three, four, bang. I'll turn the metronome on so you can hear it tap out those first four beats. Okay, and if I make sure that count in is on as well, when I punch, I'll actually have four beats from the count in and then four beats from my breathing room so that I can actually count eight beats, get into the groove of the song, and maybe even play along during that last little part and then jump into the pre chorus with both feet and nail it. So I'll turn off soloing, make sure that my bass track is selected. Might as well name it, too, while I'm here. Bass, guitar, and monitoring is on now that I'm setting it on. And my level's the same as it was before. In fact, I want to make sure I don't change that level. The worst thing would be if I do a nice punch in and the performance is perfect, but I've adjusted the level too much and suddenly the bass is too hot or not hot enough. It's just a bit of a pain to fix that after the fact. So don't mess with your set levels until you're sure you're done with a given part. After I do my take, GarageBand will cycle around again, allowing me to do a second take. But if I'm satisfied, I can just press stop right when I'm done. And even if it's cycled around, I can always junk that second bit of a partial take after the fact. Much like we did in the movie on dividing our drum loop into individual pieces and being able to choose the alternate loops, we're going to do the same thing with this bass part. The difference is I had take one and two originally, and I have one and two during the pre-chorus, but I've just recorded a third overlay, a punch-in, if you will, for the pre-chorus. So I'll need to be using take two during the first half of the song, switch over to take three during the pre-chorus, and then switch back to take two for the rest of the track. The way to do that is to put the playhead at the place you want to make the division, click on the bass track, command T to split, and I'll use the right arrow to get to the end of the pre-chorus, and command T to split again, and I'll zoom back out a little bit. Now we've got three bass regions. There's no such thing as take four up here, because I didn't even play anything there, so I'm going to go ahead and switch back to take two. I know that's the one I wanted to use. Take four is that 
tiny little tag of a cycle region when it came back around and it started almost trying to record again. So that's not even a real take. In fact, we could even go delete take four and get rid of that from the list entirely. Selected take will be deleted from the region. Absolutely. Goodbye. And there's my take three. So there's my punch in. And then on the rest of the song, we go back to take two as well. So let's listen to it right now. And I'll turn cycle region off so I can manually play through here as I would like to. And we'll listen to how it sounds and then make adjustments if we have to. First of all, let's listen to it soloed and hear the punch. Well, that sounded nearly perfect, and GarageBand really does a nice job crossfading between the old take and the new take. You don't even have to worry about cleaning up that edit at all. As far as I'm concerned, that's a done deal. I'll go back and play the whole section with the whole song in. And that's how easy it is to punch in a section of audio and just push your recorded compositions that much further. <laughs> 